Cicadas with metal body parts? You've got to be kidding me. What does that mean? Oh, he's kind of cute, isn't he? Welcome to Nugget 392. Now, Steve, you're going to have to explain what this whole big deal is about the cicadas. I've heard a little bit about it, but haven't paid all that much attention until the other day when we were at the George Washington birthplace on the Potomac in Virginia, and we heard them, and you said, we need to record those cicadas. Tell us a little bit of background about what is going on and why this is such a big deal in 2024. Sure. These cicadas uh, in 2024 are invading, they call it, uh, the country, especially in the Midwest uh, right now. We'll get to the life cycles and all that about how they work a little bit later on in the video, but you'll definitely want to stay for that. We are going to start off with an article that Scientific American did in June 2024, and they're talking about keeping time that the cicadas do, how they do it, and uh, they're a little bit confused about some things. Well, that one's really pretty. I like him. Of course, he's one of God's wonderful creations. The year was 2011, and there were all kinds of things going on around the nation and across a huge swath of the southeastern U.S. Billions of tiny newborn cicadas rained down from tree branches to burrow into the soil. This spring, those same cicadas, now grown, will venture above ground for the first time in 13 years. You've got to be kidding. They were down there for 13 years? That's a long nap, huh? <laughs> yeah, I'd be happy with a 13-hour nap. Yeah, well, keep reading. There's uh, even more to it. Going on with this article. But how do periodical cicadas like these manage to coordinate their ear-rattling emergence every 13 or, for some species, 17 years? Well, so some of them sleep 17 years. They Well, they're not really sleeping, but yes, they are underground 17 years. Well, what are they doing under there? We're going to read and find out. Well, I want to know now. <laughs> Oh, come on. I have to wait also? Yes. Oh, yikes. Okay. I may not read then if you're not going to tell me. Okay, I'll read. In 2024, two different periodical cicada groups will emerge. The 13-year brood 19, which will blanket much of the southeastern U.S., and the 17-year brood 13 will be concentrated in northern Illinois. There will also be some stragglers from other broods. When they do make mistakes, cicadas most commonly mistime their emergence by either one or four years. And next year, another massive cohort of 17-year cicadas, brood 14, is due across parts of the East Coast and the Ohio River Basin. But none of these insects, whether punctual or early, are marking the passage of time. Instead, periodical cicadas have a hack. They tally the growth cycles of the trees that they feed on. During their long stint underground, the insects sip at xylem sap, the nutrient-poor but water-rich liquid that moves from a tree's root tips up to its canopy. Each year, as a tree buds and blossoms, its xylem is briefly richer in amino acids, leading one team of researchers to call it spring elixir. Cicadas appear to count each flush of spring elixir. When those researchers took 15-year-old cicadas from a 17-year brood and manipulated the insect's food trees so that they grew leaves twice in one year, voila, the cicadas emerged a year early, having tallied the required 17 leaf growths. Isn't that amazing? That's incredible. That That's is just incredible. truly incredible. That just proves a grand creator. Absolutely. Keep going. This is an amazing article. We know that's what they count. Where they're putting their little chalk marks on the wall, we don't know, says Martha Weiss, an insect ecologist at Georgetown University. We don't really understand how they're keeping track of it. I do. God has a little chalkboard in their head. The seven periodical cicada species in the U.S. are particularly flashy and well-known because of their synchronized emergences. But the nation is home to about 150 species, all told. And we know the word species isn't a correct word, but we're just going to continue. Yeah. We're just going to continue on with. It's just the different types of cicadas. Non-periodical species in the U.S. are dubbed annual cicadas because some of them emerge every year. Well, that's well, we've always had cicadas. I grew up in Houston. We had those things going all the time. Well, not all the time, but during the summer, that was just part of what you heard. But scientists don't yet know exactly how long these insects live or whether they carry an internal counter like the 13 and 17 year cicadas clearly do. Well, I know you didn't mark this part, but it says they're out every summer. 
That's what I just that's said. That's kind of what you just mentioned. Yeah, it's kind of like mowing the lawn and watermelon and fireworks. It's, it's just part of the show. Okay, back to what I'm supposed to read. But we were read. kids, and uh, we went outside. Yeah, all the time. And rode bikes in the street. I'm telling you. Every kid has to get a concussion from falling uh, off his bike, gotta, right? Or yeah, bike? I mean, climb trees and ride bikes and dodgeball. and. Oh, no, skip that dodgeball. Mm. Don't even get me going on dodgeball. <laughs> okay, back to the article before I get upset about dodgeball. <laughs> More challenging than finding the mysterious counter is understanding how the mechanism and the bizarre lifestyle it enables evolved in the first place. Mm. I bet it is a mystery. I bet it is a mystery to him. Bizarre lifestyle. Bizarre. No, God just well, wanted to make have something a really cool. Bizarre lifestyle. That is somewhat well, no, true, it, but it, it's I, very unique anyway. I think it's kind of um, special. It is special. Bizarre kind of gives it a bad twist. I don't like That's that. True. Bizarre That's true. and evolved need to be taken out of that sentence. But anyway, <laughs> moving on. One hypothesis connects the periodic behavior to the glaciers that once blanketed much of Cicada's current territory. I'm about to laugh. <laughs> Other scientists point to the way the tactic helps the bugs avoid their predators. Oh, yeah, let's just hide from them for 13 years or 17 years, and that that'll, should, that'll that let us do live. It. it should do it, I guess. Really? And they're probably making really, like, six figures on this. Oh, okay. wait. But although neither a glacial history nor a bevy of predators is rare, periodical cicadas certainly are. Just nine of the roughly 3,400 cicada species known worldwide synchronize periodical emergences. So something else is going on. Well, number one, there are yeah. 3,400 cicada species. Aren't they all well, just, it's kind of like just cool looking different cicadas. Yeah, they've been wrong before. Whatever the circumstances are that lead to the evolution of this life history pattern, they are rare, and the rare things are always the hardest things to study, he says. We can't tell you why this evolved. We just know it has to be some special collection of circumstances. Well, when they leave God out, they're never going to find the answers. Well, it's their God of evolution. True. If they can't acknowledge God and just attribute it to a creator and doing what he wanted to do with these guys, they have to invoke evolution. And it's just so sad. And another thing I wanted to slip in right here is we have visited a lot of national parks and different parks in the last two weeks. I believe that more than half of them had the term evolve either in the park map or on one or more of the placards. They're using the word as in change over a period of time. Just notice that they stick this word in wherever they can so that we acclimate and we're used to it. Constantly and, get used to and it. And in the background, it's kind of like I've always talked about how I drink Coke, where if it's just said, subliminally you take it in and you believe it so this spring and summer if you live or travel to the eastern u.s which we are try to revel in the mysteriousness of periodical cicadas now i'm going to revel in how cool this is no matter how loud they get this emergence really is one of the seven biological wonders of the world there is nowhere else in the entire world where you can see so many periodical cicada species it is something that really nobody else in the world gets the privilege of seeing. Well, that's awesome. I'm glad that we is, got to see him then. That is awesome. And I like that last paragraph, really, because we need to do that. Just revel in the mysteriousness of it and, and the sounds of them. And, you know, we can kind of tend to get annoyed by them, I guess, huh? But they're marvelous. Well, they're kind of unrelenting. Well, they are unrelenting. Well, as long as the sun's shiny outside, usually. Oh, so they're daytime noisemakers. And at even, night, it's and the crickets even. and the frogs <laughs> yeah. and all yeah. of that. And Well, we have a map here of uh, where the cicadas in 2024 are not only due to emerge, but have already started emerging. And we also have a map of the 17 and 13-year cicadas for several years where they're going to be in the United States. Well, it looks like it's going to be uh, quite a few of them for quite a while. But on your previous map, I see you have like Raleigh, Durham, and we were in that area. And that's but, where we were. But we were actually farther north towards the Potomac between Maryland and Virginia where we heard those. Because they're not isolated just to this area, right? Maybe we just Correct. saw the annual ones. So we heard the annual ones. We didn't hear these. Well, we might have because we, we were parked uh, west of Raleigh for a while and, and weren't even paying attention. We just... Well, and like they mentioned in that article, sometimes they have a little mistiming going on. So that could certainly have been some of them, too. All right. This picture of this poor guy, he's upside down. What's the deal here? Well, he is. And I have it outlined is there. Is it a she? Where the, 
well, it's a she. She has her ovipositor out and is scratching and digging into these, uh, this tree limb here and depositing eggs. It is amazing how they actually do this. This is where the metal body parts come in. And now I see you have something from bugoftheweek.com. That's kind of cute. I like their website picture. It looks like the... Oh, wait, 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 wait. It says University of Maryland. We've just been in Maryland for a week, and I've been seeing that flag everywhere, so I recognize it. All right, so this says egg laying and the dark side of cicadas, June 2021. And you were talking about what this cicada was doing, and this is from this website. She then inserts her hollow ovipositor into the branch, and with powerful abdominal contractions, she pumps between 20 and 30 tiny eggs into each slit, creating what is technically known in cicada speak as an egg nest. Each female has the potential to lay between 200 and 400 eggs during the course of her two to four week lifespan. Now, wait a minute. This girl's been asleep for 13 or 17 years and she's only going to live <laughs> for two to four weeks? Isn't that something? That's a bust. In the warmth of summer days and nights, cicada eggs develop and after six to 10 weeks, Nymphs hatch and tumble to the earth below. We've included the same general information from uh, various sources. In this article from Scientific Reports, an augmented wood penetrating structure, cicada ovipositors, enhanced with metals and other inorganic elements. And when they lay their eggs in the tree branches, you'll notice that many of those tree branches are, are dying. They're dead. She tears them up, actually. <laughs> Does a good job tearing up the trees, but it is amazing the way they actually do what they do and how they lay these eggs and then they lay in the ground for in the ground for 13 to 17 years. Again, they mentioned that an augmented wood penetrating structure, cicada ovipositors enhanced with metals and other inorganic elements. And they talk about how the ovipositors cut through wood to lay their eggs. They actually drill into the wood of the, the branches and lay these eggs 20 to 30 in each slit and each female as many as 400 eggs. But there's something interesting here. To the best of our knowledge, this is the first report of metal deposits in the cuticle of true bugs. Fascinating. Given the ability to penetrate into wood, we have hypothesized that the ovipositor cuticle is augmented with inorganic elements, which could increase hardness and reduce ovipositor fracturing. They use scanning electron microscopy and energy dispersive X-ray spectroscopy to evaluate the material properties of ovipositors of four cicada species, including three species of periodical cicadas. We found 14 inorganic elements of the cuticle. And this is the first report of metal deposits in the cuticle of true bugs. Natural selection has favored metal reinforced cuticle. No, it's not natural selection favoring. It's that's the way God made them. It's just so crazy. It is crazy. It's not natural selection. God created them exactly how he wanted these insects to be. When they leave out God and they are expecting life to show up on its own and evolve into something different, and over and over and over, they will be flailing around forever because they can't come to the truth. Well, some of the metals that they found were manganese, zinc, iron, calcium, among others. Well, I hope we gave you a little bit of a new twist on those noisy little insects that are singing as you go along the hiking trail. As a reminder, if you haven't subscribed yet, can you please subscribe and tell a friend about our channel? And hit that like button. As always, it's creation versus evolution, which makes sense. It's a marvelous creation that God gave us. Be sure to go back to watch other informative nuggets. Thank you.